influence on fashion lives on. Greatest designer of the 20th century, Gabrielle Coco Chanel. If you've seen a suit on a woman, this fashion revolution was invented by a lady who chose not to be bound by limitations. We will discuss how Chanel's decision to abandon her family led her to create this revolutionary brand. But before we move on, you might have a lingering question on your mind. How did she survive? Let's find out. Gillian Bonheur Chanel was born to laundry worker Eugenie Jean Deville Chanel, commonly known as Jean, in a charitable hospital in Samour, Maine et Loire. The family was in abject poverty. When Gabrielle was 11 years old, Jean suddenly passed at 32. She did not attend school. Her father sent his two boys to work on farms while he left his three daughters in an orphanage maintained by the Sisters of Abazine. According to the organization's website, the Sacred Heart of Mary congregation was founded to care for the underprivileged and unloved, including overseeing homes for abandoned and orphaned girls. It was a straightforward, austere way of living that required strict self-control. Chanel's ability to sew helped her advance in life at the orphanage. When she was 18, Chanel moved out of Abazine and into a Catholic girls' boarding school in the nearby town of Moline. The versions of Chanel's upbringing that she recalled later varied from the originals. She asserted that she was transferred to live with her two aunts after her mother died and her father emigrated to America in search of better employment possibilities. She said that she was born 10 years after 1883 and that her mother died when she was younger than 11 years old. Chanel spent six years at Aubazine, studying the craft before landing a position as a seamstress. When she wasn't sewing, she performed in a cabaret favored by military officers. In the Moline Pavilion La Rotonde, Chanel had her stage debut as a vocalist in a cafe concert, a popular entertainment at the time. She entertained the crowd between her performances as a poseuse. The total amount in the collection plate represented their wages. The song Who Had Seen Coco became Gabrielle's trademark when she started appearing in cabarets at night, earning her the moniker Coco. She enjoyed bragging that her father had initially addressed her by that moniker. Some claim that the words Coco Rico and Kikwa Vu Coco served as an inspiration for the name Coco, but others assert that the name is a play on the French term coquette which means kept lady. The cabaret regulars in the armed forces were drawn to Chanel's performances because of the air of innocent charm she exuded. Chanel found work in the resort town of Vicky in 1906. She wanted to sing in one of Vicky's numerous cafes, theaters, or music halls. Chanel's youthful and lovely looks impressed the casting directors at her auditions but her unimpressive singing voice kept her from getting any acting jobs. She took a job as a donus do at the Grand Grill because she needed the money, serving customers the renowned Vicky Mineral Water known for its health benefits. Chanel returned to Moline and her preferred pub, La Rotonde, following the conclusion of the Vicky season. She realized then that she couldn't take a career in theater seriously. Opening a hat business in the French beach town of Deville in 1912 marked Chanel's start in the fashion industry. She soon established herself as a trendsetter and expanded into the clothes industry. In 1913, Chanel opened a shop in Deville with the assistance of Arthur Capel, a man with whom she had had an affair. It was here that she debuted her opulent sportswear. The materials jersey and trico, more frequently used in men's underwear then, were repurposed for the season's fashions. The location in the heart of a hip neighborhood was perfect. You could buy outerwear like the Mariniere, Chanel's iconic sailor blouse. The three women who cared the most about Chanel were her sister Antoinette, her maternal aunt Adrienne, and her confidant. Chanel engaged Adrienne and Antoinette as brand ambassadors, and they were paraded daily through the streets and along the boardwalks. Chanel opened a store in Biarritz in 1915, spurred on by her success in Deville. The wealthy and those compelled to abandon their countries during the war sought safety in Biarritz, 
since it was close to wealthy Spanish customers and situated on the Cote Basque. The Buritz site is situated in a home close to the casino rather than operating in a conventional storefront. In its first year of business, Chanel was so prosperous that the following year, in 1916, it paid back Capel's initial investment. One of Chanel's first acquaintances in Biarritz was the exiled Grand Duke Dmitry Pavlovich of Russia. After a brief, passionate experience, they stayed friends for many years. The Maison Chanel, Chanel's first couture firm, was established at 31 Rue Cambon in Paris when she earned her certification as a couturière in 1919. Chanel's impact on other fashion houses was clear, particularly to Coco. Chanel was cited as stating about Yves Saint Laurent, Saint Laurent has superb taste. He shows superior taste the more he imitates me. Cristobal Balenciaga and Chanel, who had been friendly, also fell out when the latter allegedly said Balenciaga was too old to keep designing. In an interview with WWD for her obituary, Balenciaga pondered on their friendship and Chanel's loss and said, I feel incredibly sorry and it makes me realize how old I am myself. Along with her, a remarkable, powerful, and important person vanished. Miniskirts were originally referred to as a display of flesh by Chanel, who said the style offended her. She advocated for women wearing pants instead, and the Vicky regime even detained her for doing so during World War II. Chanel believed that pants were a sensible choice for ladies. She added, Girls are great, and rolling around on the beach all day is excellent. Putting on trousers is fairly simple at the beach. After this, her professional success skyrocketed due to her unbridled drive and insistence on only the finest. She developed her first now iconic fragrance, Chanel No. 5, out of the same insatiable want to keep creating new things. It has since gained widespread recognition as one of the finest fragrances ever created. The following year saw the debut of the scents number 22, number 19, and Gardenia, named after the designer's favorite flower. The ever-observant Gabrielle Chanel found inspiration for her creations in the black skirts with white collars and cuffs worn by Parisian servants and laborers. Her study helped develop the plainest little black dress, petite robe noire, in the middle of the 20th century. When the designer had created a solid and unified image for her apparel line, her attention turned to accessories. Count Etienne de Beaumont and Duke Folco de Verdora helped Chanel open an atelier to create costume jewelry. The costume designer, who valued the simplicity of her designs, was driven to produce abundant, even excessive items. She tried to establish the perfect harmony between seriousness and humor in her accessories. Today, the Chanel 255, the handbag that has been most frequently copied since its debut, is credited as being created in the 1930s. As Chanel put it, being plagiarized is the highest honor one can receive. It only occurs to grown-ups. She didn't care that her products were being imitated. Due to constraints put in place by the war, the designer had to take a sabbatical from the business for a period before re-emerging in 1954. Her contemporaries considered Chanel, 71 years old, a cultural relic. Naturally, Chanel flaunted her knitted outfit, rapidly becoming another staple in the home. The First Lady, Jackie Kennedy, was a strong proponent of the traditional suit and frequently wore one. Jackie Kennedy is most remembered for wearing a Chanel suit with a vibrant pink point knit on the day her husband, John F. Kennedy, was killed. She frequently said things that made people look twice. Chanel was not one to keep her opinions to herself and was open in her criticism of others. For example, Chanel claimed that Brigitte Bardot was money-crazed and that her full breast was too much in WWD's obituary. Chanel frequently criticized fashion editors, calling one of them the most arrogant lady I have ever encountered, and another one the face of a monkey with the mouth of a sewer. Even for royalty, Chanel was not one to design for free. 
According to the designer's obituary in WWD, she said, These princesses and duchesses, their bills are never paid. Why should I provide something for free to them? Never received anything from anyone. On January 10th, 1971, Chanel, who had lived to 87, passed away at her residence at the Hotel Ritz in Paris. She led a fully lived life and changed how women saw clothes worldwide. The late designer's assistants, Gaston Berthelot and Ramon Esparza took over the Maison as soon as she passed away. Karl Lagerfeld demonstrated how to refresh the brand's distinctive design after taking over as creative director in 1983, without veering too far from Chanel's initial aims.